Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. All right, today we're going to talk about debt. Now I know it's not the most exciting topic in the world, but it's one full of misunderstandings. So let's clear things up. You've probably heard that all debt is bad, right? Well, that's not entirely true. In fact, money itself is a form of debt. It's all about how you use it. The key is to see debt as a tool and not a trap. So rich people, they know this. That's why they're rich. They don't just avoid debt. They use it wisely. There's good debt, like investing in assets that grow your money, and bad debt, like buying stuff that loses value. So let's be clear. It's super important to know the difference between the two. That's the secret to building wealth. But here's the catch. You can't overdo it. Over leveraging yourself means you owe more than you can handle. Now I've been there and it was very scary for me. I like me and my partner was freaking out, you know, when we had a lot of properties and we were over leveraged. But we turned things around by getting smarter about our investments and then paying off some of that debt and having cash flowing properties. So let's go into the essential skills for building wealth, right? Debt isn't inherently bad. It's how you use it that matters. There's good debt, which can help you build assets, and bad debt, which drains your resources, like we previously said. To truly harness the power of debt, you need a few key skills. First of all, you need to understand debt. Knowing the difference between good and bad debt is going to be crucial. So look at it this way. Good debt helps you acquire assets that generate income or appreciate in value. Bad debt is for things that depreciate like most consumer goods. The other thing we need to talk about is leveraging other people's money. OPM. Banks consider your deposits a liability because they owe you interest. Smart entrepreneurs flip this on its head. We use other people's money or OPM to finance our ventures like real estate or even high value assets. Now asset creation and other management is another thing you want to look at. So focus on assets that generate income for you Rental properties are a classic example of this. Think of high value purchases or other investments that can appreciate and even generate income. Now, the other thing is sales mastery. The ability to sell is directly linked to income. Strong sales skills are essential for financial success, especially any kind of business or real estate uh, venture. Then you've got mindset and continuous learning, something I do all the time. So you want to adopt a growth mindset. Instead of saying, I can't afford it, ask, how can I afford it? Constant learning and surrounding yourself with successful people are going to be key to financial growth and becoming wealthy. The other thing is mindset of wealth creators, right? What is their mindset? First of all, they ask positive questions. One of the key shifts in our mindset when you know, we were growing our business is to ask, how can we afford it rather than saying we can't afford it? Now, this simple change opens up opportunities and pushed us to find creative solutions. When faced with financial challenges, instead of shutting down, we explored various options and different ideas to make things work. Now, this proactive approach has been essential in growing our real estate wealth over the last 30 years. So then you also want to look at your financial strategies and the investments that you're going to make, right? So opting for local investment over stock market bets. So most individuals channel their savings into their primary residence or into the stock market investments. While this isn't wrong, investing in local properties can be more lucrative if done right. Me and my partner, we purchased rental properties that provide us a steady income. We own many rental units and plan to expand our portfolio further. By thinking differently and focusing on tangible assets, we create financial freedom for us when we retire. Now, one of the things you're going to have to look at is how to approach handling money. Some people are very bad at this. Now, if you look at Dave Ramsey, 
and the way that he has his guide to living without debt, Dave Ramsey's approach to personal finance emphasizes living without any debt. So no debt at all. He believes in using cash for purchases instead of borrowing and advocates for building an emergency fund. This method reduces financial stress and helps avoid interest payments. Now, he preaches simple steps like creating a budget and sticking to it, saving for emergencies, and then investing for the future. Now, I do like the no debt philosophy as you are older, but you will have all that equity tied up into your paid off rentals or your personal home, and it kind of just sits there making you no money or nothing at all. So you just have to make a decision. What are you going to do? You know, follow a Dave Ramsey approach or be a more aggressive. So weighing the advice from financial gurus is one of those things you'll have to look into. There are different views on personal finance strategies. While some advise avoiding debt, others suggest using it to build wealth. So you need to weigh the advice from various experts and decide what aligns with your financial goals. Okay, so one couple things you should look at, debt. So using bad credit like credit cards can lead to financial trouble, while good debt such as mortgages can help build assets. Then you also want to look at investments, right? Some prefer real estate investing and others want to invest in stocks or starting a business. Also, you need to look at asset management. The goal is to have investments that grow and generate income. So your personal financial plan should reflect a balanced approach, right? Using some debt wisely and investing in ways that grow your wealth. Okay, so let's look at criteria for asset-backed borrowing. So when borrowing against assets, there are specific factors that you're going to need to consider. Number one, asset value and type. So the value of the asset should be substantial enough to secure the loan. Then you're going to have to look at the different assets like real estate or other high value items that can serve this purpose. Two, then you're going to have to check on collateral, right? So collateral is essential. It acts as a security for the lender. So the lender will evaluate the asset's ability to cover the loan in case of default. Three, then you have loan to value ratio. This is another thing you're going to have to look at. This ratio helps determine how much money can be borrowed against the asset. Now, typically, a percentage of the asset's value is used to figure out the loan amount, usually about 80%. Now, fourth, you have income generation, right? Assets that produce income, like rental properties, are going to be generally more preferred, or we would like you to go that route. This income can help cover the loan payments, reducing your financial risk. And then number five, you have credit worthiness, right? Now, while the asset is critical, the borrower's credit worthiness also plays a role. A healthy credit score can improve loan terms significantly. If you have a 500 credit score, your loan terms are going to be bad. If you have an 840 credit score, they're going to be really good. Next, number six, say non-personal guarantees. So ideally, the debt should not require a personal guarantee when you take out these loans. Banks should be comfortable repossessing and selling that asset to settle that debt. Now, by keeping these criteria in mind, we can effectively use assets to secure debt, ensuring that we maintain financial stability while leveraging debt for growth. So hey, let's look at financial savviness for rental property investing, right? So understanding the basics. Cash flow, right? Cash flow is king. Probably hear that a thousand times. So you need to grasp the concept of positive cash flow and how to achieve it through a rental income exceeding expenses. And then property valuation, right? Learn how to access property value, considering factors like Hey, where is this property located? What is the condition of it? And what are the market trends in that area? Then you want to look at investment returns, right? Understand the key metrics like return on investment, cash on cash return, and capitalization rate or the cap rate. And then you want to look at financing options. 
get familiar with different loan types like conventional FHA, VA loans, interest rates, and down payment requirements. Also, you want to know about tax implications. That's why I have a, an accountant to help me with all this. But understand the tax benefits of rental properties ownership, including deductions and depreciation. And then you need to check on wealth and social interactions, right? A big part of the problem is how we think about debt. Many people see it as bad and they're told to live debt free. While that might work for some, it's not the only path to financial freedom. Another issue is where we put our money. People often invest heavily in their homes, thinking that's the key to wealth. But a house is a liability, not an asset, especially the one you live in. We're not talking about rental property. We're talking about the one you live in. Because the house you live in doesn't generate any income. Real wealth comes from the assets that generate income, like rental properties or businesses. It's about thinking long-term and using financial tools strategically. We've learned that the key to financial success is to challenge conventional wisdom. It's about understanding how banks operate and using their system to your advantage. So if you're tired of the financial struggle that you've been at or where you're at in life, it's time to rethink your approach. It's not just about saving money. It's about growing it. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for more videos on wealth building, real estate investing, and making money. Let us know your thoughts in the comments.